our premium insect ingredient enable to feed plants, farmed animals, pets, and humans. We basically offer an ecological, healthy, and sustainable solution to meet the, grow the growing global demand for proteins and plant consumption. And maybe should I, should I just give you a few telling numbers which were resonating a lot with me. If you look, and 70% is the key number. If you look by 2050, we need to increase our production of protein by 70% to meet our planet's population. But we also need to reduce by 2050 our gas emission by 70%. All of that with 5% of extra arable land. So that's quite a conundrum. And that tells you why maybe people are interested to come and see what we can do today. Isabel, I want to pick up on that statistic around land because we know there's just not enough land for food production down the track to meet these growing needs for uh, food consumption. And as we think differently, we think about to the area that you're at today in Amiens. I mean, this is a, a place known for its Gothic architecture, a stop for tourists along the way in its previous life also, a very big hub for textiles. But can we think about cities or areas like this across Europe where you can actually put very compact facilities producing a lot of food for the future? No, for sure. And, you know, the, the beauty about, you know, a company like Insect and what we produce is we offer alternative protein with 90% less land and 45% lesser resources than animal protein. And that's you, as you were saying, to the compact type of size and the minimal size and our insects are so small that we can farm them in quantities in a small amount of space with a lot less resources. Can I ask you about uh, this segment? Because whereas we talk about agri-tech, it's a fairly wide segment now that has been growing rapidly, some of it fueled by vegan trends. But when it comes to insect protein, a very specific part of that segment, how fast and, and how much do you think this can capture in terms of market size down the track? So the, the addressable market is huge because, as I said, you have so many applicability. And that's one of the beauty, I think, of this industry is with one biology, one technology, you can serve different markets from basically the land and uh, to animals to us. So I think when you look at human, obviously, the uh, acceptation rate is increasing fast, but is obviously not completely there yet. And maybe an easy comparison is to look at insects as, you know, the new sushi. 10, 15 years ago, no one wanted to eat them, and now they're all over. Isabel, I want to ask you about the sentiment out there, because you have been a long-time banker, and we've seen huge moves on markets in recent weeks. As we talk about uh, the growth potential for companies like yours, to what extent has sentiment shifted in recent weeks around the, the tech growth story, even impacting your sector? Uh, and if it's not moved yet, do you think the VCs are going to change their sentiment in coming weeks and months because of the interest rate story? It's a very good question, and it's obviously at the forefront of, of my mind and all, all of us uh, as to see the sustainability uh, and, uh, and the growth rates that we've seen in the market. So I do think actually, uh, despite everything that we said, it should be playing in the favor of companies that are producing something and solving a problem, because you've seen a lot of uh, inflation is obviously a concern. And you've seen QEs as obviously Fed, in a way, valuation increase across, whether it's on public markets or private markets. But equally, I think people are now, and with the COVID crisis, refocusing and thinking, and I've seen the risk. And for us to have a sustainable food chain in the long term and something, food independence has been shown as something critical. So while clearly there is concern in watching how markets develop, I think that people who are providing a solution to a real problem 